So someone made an interesting comment on one of our YouTube shorts recently, and I wanted to dive into it and kind of expand upon it because I thought it was a terrific point. Uh, and the comment was essentially on our uh, Densetsu no Starfy short, and I'll have that link for you up there. And the comment was essentially, it'd be really nice if Nintendo would just like let us buy retro games again. And you know what? That's a damn good point. If you take a look at how Nintendo has set up their Nintendo Switch service, which I still think is pretty good of a value. I mean, I don't play online, so for me, that part of it, I don't care about. Having the cloud storage is very, very nice, especially when you have multiple devices. Um, the thing for me is I do really dig having the ability to play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color games all through my Nintendo Switch and Sega Genesis games too. I'd love to see Master System. I'd love to see... That kind of gets into where I'm going with this. If you take a look, and a lot of people have done this because in the past, if you take a look at where the Wii, the Wii U, the DS, 3DS, eShops all were, man, they were so much more robust just not only in the amount that you could download and purchase, but the variety you could download and purchase and the fact you could download your purchase. See, the problem with the Switch Online stuff is it's all cloud-based as far as you have to be regularly connected to the internet for Nintendo to verify your purchase. Um, I've had issues where I've been playing a Switch Online game and then I go and I put my Switch in airplane mode because I'm getting in an airplane and I can't access my content because I don't have an active internet connection right then and there. It's really super annoying. Um, why, if you take a look at Sony with what they've done with PlayStation Plus, and that's that's ridiculous at how expensive that's got, Xbox has just announced that they're going to update and increase their prices again. But with both of those services, you at least have the option where you can purchase titles, modern and retro, through the various eShops, or you can do their monthly or, or streaming service that they have, whether, again, it's Game Pass or it is uh, PlayStation Plus. Nintendo doesn't do that for you. You have with some games, like Sega has their Sega Classics line, Capcom has released some of their older games too, but you don't have the either-or option. It really is you stream it, or not stream it, but you subscribe to the, the regular revenue stream for Nintendo, or you don't get to play. And, you know, people like to, to throw around anti-consumer, but that's really kind of anti-consumer if you think about it. It's one of those, you are limiting a customer's access to your library, artificially so. And, I mean, yes, you do have great games available in each of the libraries, and I'll just open this up behind me with the the nes version and sorry for the reflection on my light box back behind me it's kind of oddball but i mean if you take a look at what's here i mean there are some fantastic games the fact that you can play rc pro-am one of my favorite games of all time is fantastic there we've got super mario one two and three double dragon and then they even add you know the extras on here too where you have the the special editions and and all that like those are really really neat and they're really really cool but you know what even cooler if I had the option just to buy that and have it kind of like Steam. And I'm not a Steam user. Um, I don't play games on my PC. I'm not a Steam Deck owner. So for me, I look at the way that they have everything set up, and I'm pretty envious of it. Uh, even if you look at between Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, like Microsoft has the philosophy you buy it once you've got it across all platforms. Um, and you get quality of life improvements with them too. Sony has been slow to adopt that, but they have done that. Nintendo's like, oh, we have an opportunity to make someone buy Super Mario Brothers for the 14th time. 14th time's a charm. Cha-ching. And it just, it sucks. It sucks in so many different ways. Um, I understand the why behind it. It's a reoccurring revenue stream. For those of you old enough to remember going into Radio Shack back in the day and how things changed in the 80s and 90s where it used to be a place to go for computers, resistors, resistor color code cards, um, patch cables, 
and then radio controlled cars at Christmas. That's what it was. And then it changed to cell phones and satellite dishes. Why did this change happen? From a business standpoint, I used to work there. It was all about reoccurring revenue streams. See, when you may have gotten that cell phone for a penny, and man, weren't those the days. You know, me as a salesperson, I was getting a $15 to $20 spiff or a commission on each of those sales. If I sell, you know, 10 of those a month, that's, you know, several hundred dollars more in my pocket. If I, you know, for each one of those that I sold, I made more money, even though it didn't cost you, the end user, a whole lot of money. The reason why they were able to pay that is because they were getting kickbacks from, you know, way back in the day it was Cellular One or US Cellular and then Prime Co or Prime Star on the satellite dish side of things, Direct TV, um, Dish Network, um, Net Zero for internet service for a while we had. We were getting kickbacks from those companies to promote their programs in our stores. And they saw it as a cost of marketing to pay us, the salespeople, uh, that much money per transaction. Nintendo doesn't have to do that. Um, and the thing, too, is if you look, and it's been one of my arguments, too, for digital versus a physical release. Even if you purchase digital, you don't you don't own it. It's an extended rental or an extended lease because if that eShop shuts down, you are SOL and you got nothing to show for it. Um, so it's just one of those things that, like, say, for example, I could buy... Even if there was nothing on the cartridge, if I could buy a Switch version of Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3, have the game case and everything, just with the download codes, or have a cartridge that has all three games, which quite honestly, they don't, NES games don't take up a whole lot of room, so that would be easy to do. Um, You know, but even if there's only one game on there and I have to download the rest, that's what, uh, I believe that's what Capcom did with the Resident Evil collection that had... Was it four, five, and six on there for the Switch? I've got, I've never opened, but regardless, you get what I'm saying. It's it's very, it's not that it's disturbing, but it's unfortunate that Nintendo and other manufacturers, quite honestly, have basically gotten so much into the subscription side of things that they don't care if you necessarily own their software anymore. They don't want you to own it, because if you own it, they only get paid from you once especially if it's physical you know if it's one of those where you have to have a reoccurring service fee then they get paid over and over and over again and it just i'm i'm tired of it and you know i'm gonna pop the comment up here because i thought it was a great point um on the starfy video the short that we did and it's true i i do wish that they would allow us to just go ahead and purchase these games and you know i'm i'm thankful that they have done things like given us the chance to own, and not my type of game, but Mother is now available in the States for the first time. That's fantastic. Starfy is another one that is great. Now, I do wish that they were translated. They didn't even offer a translation patch, uh, patch either. It just, it was literally, they took the original ROM and made it available to owners of the Switch online service, so or renters of the Switch online service. So uh, let me know what you think. Uh, kind of a shorter video, kind of more of an opinion piece here. But one of those things, I thought it was a great point, and it really made me think, and kind of wanted to see what you thought of it too. Now, if you haven't seen that particular YouTube short, I'll have it linked for you in the upper corner here. And we produce a YouTube short every single day. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way when we upload something, you're kept the most up-to-date and informed.